So next up on, next up on stage A, we have uh, Seb Lee Delisle, who is going to be giving us a talk that sounds very, very much EM, EMF um, compatible uh, about coding with lasers. So uh, sounds great. Over to you, Seb. Oh. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. Oh, I'm so pleased to be here. It's been so many years. I keep hearing about EMF camp. Everyone's like, you've got to come to EMF camp. And I'm here, finally. Yay. <laughs> All right, so where do I start? Well, I have a lot of job titles, and it's kind of nice to be back here, actually, because I've sort of been in and out of various communities. You know, I was part of the initial group who set up Build Bright in the hack space. I've been making stuff, I've been coding stuff, so I've been part of the technology group. I was part of Lucy Rogers' Guild of Makers for a little bit. You know, did lots of stuff with the Raspberry Pi. So it's nice to see lots of people who I haven't seen for many, many years. So thanks for making me so feel so welcome. All right, so yeah, here's a list of my job titles. <laughs> and you'll notice the final one there is possibly the most interesting one. And it's laserist. You know, I'm a fully qualified laserist. I've got all my training and certification. I'm legally allowed to operate massive, powerful lasers like this one. Pew. I can't even see it. <laughs> Let's see. Can I see the laser? Oh, there you go. If I go to the really dark bits. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, take the lights down for just for the drama of it. Okay, are you ready? I know. I know. Years of, tr years of training. Okay, so... Um, Professional display lasers, they're sort of like this laser, except they're a bit more powerful. But then they, and see how I can move around this laser? Have the lights down again, please. So I can move this laser around, and it sort of draws pictures, right? <laughs> now, I can do that with display lasers because they use these galvanometers, and one of them oscillates one way, and the other one oscillates the other way, and it means that they've got two dimensions of movement, and those lasers can move around to draw anything at all. And I actually quite like to, to draw you know, animations and games and stuff like that. And today, oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> uh, today, I saw this game in the, uh, where is it? It's in the... It's in the bar, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Ian Sharp's uh, Flappy Bird is such an amazing game. Um, well, actually, is, that, is it a really good game? Yeah, right? Cool. Cool. I didn't get a chance to play it because it was like a massive queue of kids. <laughs> so I thought, wouldn't it be more fun to make like a Flappy Bird game that could be played by more than one person at a time? Like, say, say maybe like the entire tent here. And, and what if, just for extra excitement, that game was rendered not in this incredible mechanical genius, but with a laser? <laughs> oh, thank you so much for going along. <laughs> All right, so I keep going the wrong direction with this. All right, so I should just say as a, a strobe warning, I'm going to turn this laser on. Uh, it's going to point at the ceiling. Lasers, as because they draw by sort of moving a dot around, it can get a little bit flickery. So if you're a bit photosensitive, then take the necessary precautions. It's not as intense as a strobe light, but there's a little flicker to it. Okay, so... Let's, uh, let's see, uh, live demos, what could possibly go wrong? All right, so what do I have to do? I have to arm the laser. Okay, uh, yeah, right, so let's just make sure I've got the brightness on full. Take the test pattern off. Oh, bless. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Okay, now you might notice that this, uh, this clappy bird, this flappy bird, like me, responds very well to applause. <laughs> okay, let me just uh, adjust the sensitivity a little bit. Otherwise, you will not be able to play this. Okay, give me your top level. All right, I think we've calibrated it. Are you ready to play Laser Clappy Bird in three, two, one, go? 
Zero points, everyone. Well done. Congratulations. Fantastic work. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, okay, should we try again? All right. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. Can we beat the previous high score of zero? <laughs> All right, let's try it again. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Should we keep going? Should we just... You should, you should never stand in front of a laser like this, by the way. I'm, I'm fully trained, it's fine. <laughs> I'll tell you one cool thing, is I've got a smoke machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, finally, we've got a bit of drama. Okay, all right, let's, I'm going to turn the smoothing up a little, or is it down? I can't remember. Let's turn it up. Just give me a level. Yeah, that seems better, doesn't it? Okay, three, two, one, go. Oh, jeez. I do have more, more talk. I can't just do this. Like the whole... All right, just want, let's just get one point. Okay, just get one point. Okay. One point, yes, we did it. We beat Laser Clappy Bird. All right, let's get back to my actual talk. <laughs> um, uh, uh, just, uh, what am I doing? Let's just disarm that laser. Okay, all right. So I don't really know how I'm going to follow <laughs> follow this. Um, where's my clicker gone? What am I doing? I'm sort of flustered now after that excitement. All right, I, you know what? I can't find my clicker, but I do have this Atari joystick that I hacked, and uh, I can think I can use this. Oh, there you go, cool. <laughs> nice one. Um, so, yeah, I've been doing um, massive laser shows in the last few years, uh, including, there's, it's just a few clips. There's one from Coventry Cathedral that I did. Had probably, oh, I don't know, like 25 to 30 normal lasers and another, like, 40, like, starburst lasers. This is a, a project I did in Newcastle. So the sort of projects that I do, this is someone else's project, actually, that just snuck in there. That was, uh, this is mine. That's definitely mine. Most of them's mine, but some of them are other people using my software, which still counts, right? Still has mine. This is all mine. It's mine. This one's mine. <laughs> uh, what was I even saying? Anyway, yeah, so I do massive uh, laser projects, and I own a lot of lasers these days, but it wasn't always like that. It was actually only a few years ago I was doing projects like this, which were much more about making hardware. So this was laser light synths, where I made these light-up keyboards that anyone could play. And while you played them, like laser beams shot over your head um, to a, co a company, whichever note that you played. And I don't know about you, but... Um, I think most people want to play musical instruments, and I think most people have an innate musicality, but most people can't actually play musical instruments because they're really hard, and most of the notes are wrong, and it's really hard to get it in time. So this project, I removed all the wrong notes, so you could only play right notes uh, as a minor pentatonic scale for those music nerds in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I locked it into time and I did some arpeggios. It was a really fun project. Actually, the first version of this is almost exactly 10 years old, so I feel like I need to bring this out again, don't you? All right, cool. Maybe next year at EMF camp. What do you think? All right. It's really hard. <laughs> all right. Um, so I was doing all these hardware projects with LEDs and laser projections, and this... I, w I wanted to do this really cool, like, file, interactive fireworks show, and I just managed to, do, to build these light sticks 
that had LEDs all the way inside them, and they were motion uh, tracked, uh, and they were touch sensitive. So you could see when someone touched the light stick, it fired like a, a, a run of LEDs up the light stick. And when it got to the end, it seamlessly converted into like a laser projection. And this was the very first time that I'd run it, um, and I was all set that year to to expand this project even bigger. So this version had six uh, light sticks, uh, and I I'd had a project booked in that needed like 30, so I was all set to get a load more lasers, build a load more of these light sticks, and really develop this project into like a fully fledged fireworks display. And you know, I really love it because the lasers are so bright, they're almost like as bright as actual fireworks. In fact, they are definitely as bright as actual fireworks. And that's what I love, you know, to just provide this sort of idea of spectacle, but with more renewable technology. Um, so that was February 2020. <laughs> So things didn't quite work out. <laughs> one by one, like all my projects were cancelled. And like most people, I was left feeling a bit unsure of what would happen. So I threw myself into a few like maker projects. I think, do you remember the 3D crowd project where we were all 3D printing like uh, PPE and all of those kind of things? So we found things to do and we were try really trying to help. And everyone on a, was it a Thursday night? We'd applaud the NHS? Was it Thursday? It seems like a dream, doesn't it? It's so, so weird. Like, what happened? Just like a few years, just a sort of a weird blur. Anyway, I thought I'd thank the NHS in my own way um, by pointing lasers out the back of my flat and projecting onto Sussex Heights. So at the time I lived in Brighton, uh, and this, I could see this building from outside of my flat. I happened to have a balcony flat up on the hill. And although the building was like 800 meters away, I could still kind of project onto it with relatively small lasers. So here you can see me just setting up the lasers out the back, pointing across the skyline. Um, and you know what was really heartening was that well, I'd sort of forgotten what I did for a living at that point. I was like, oh yeah, I've got some lasers. Why don't I just, why don't I just point them out? So I don't have to leave the house. I can just <laughs> put it on the balcony. So that, that was really nice. And everyone responded really well to it. I, I, you know, if you can try and remember what it was like, we just literally had no entertainment. There was no music gigs. There was no concerts. All we had was Netflix. Right, we just watched Bridgerton again, uh, you know. So to have something that was a little bit unusual and a little bit of a sort of scale, a scaled up display, and of course outdoors, so people could go outside and enjoy it, um, and and people just really responded well to it, and it really resonated with them. So. Um, there were some arts council grants available at that time to help you develop your practice. Obviously, though, all the artists were struggling. So I managed successfully to get one of these grants and I purchased some really big lasers, like some 30 watt lasers. So the ones I've been using here, I think were probably six, uh, maybe four to 11 watts. Um, but I realized, oh, some lightning, that was cool. Or oh, just a replay. Um, I realized that I could do projects outdoors with really massive lasers and everyone could view it from a distance and they could spread out and, you know, it was a COVID friendly project. And so with the Arts Council grant money, I bought a massive laser, a 30 watt laser, um, and I bought two of these. And I'd only ever worked with 11 watt lasers before and they were pretty scary, but this was like so scary. And if you can imagine it just in a small studio, like you can't really get a sense of it from this video, but all the light you see in that room is coming from the laser. <laughs> It's just like lighting up the entire room. And, you know, obviously you should never really just put your hand in front of a laser, right? But sometimes you do, just to sort of see what, <laughs> what, it's, what it's... I'm trained laser, this is fine, I've got all my certificates. Sometimes you do, and, and I did that with my 11 watt lasers occasionally, and it feel a little bit warm. You can't really hold it there, you have to sort of take it away. It's a bit like putting your finger through a candle, you know, you can do it, but if you hold it there, it, it burns. And so with the 11 watts, I could sort of move it slowly through and it would be fine. And with this one, I just thought, oh, let's just give it a go. And it was like, 
I was just like, oh, let's just see what's... Yeah, that really hurt. Um, I don't ever do that. So we were in a different league, and I didn't really have a good understanding of what that would look like. I can't go back. Um, so I put it on my balcony and shot it straight up into the sky. <laughs> and this is what it looked like. It was kind of cool. So over this period, I developed a project called Laser Light City. So the idea was, you know, all of the light festivals that I'd been booked for and now were completely cancelled, I could now offer them this new project called Laser Light City, which involved these massive lasers, uh, on top of tall buildings, and I would offer the public the chance to move them and change the color and the shape through their phones. That way, you know, they could spread out, uh, we could have it run across multiple nights, uh, and yeah, we were starting to get some interest from the light festivals. So the first test project was in Brighton, and this is on top of Sussex Heights, the same building that I was projecting onto before, I was now installing big lasers on top of, and it's this was just the first of many skyscrapers that we became familiar with. Um, and we, by the end, we got very used to being at that sort of height. It was kind of cool, though. Nice views. Oh, no, that's a bit scary. Oh, no, there's Abby. Abby's in the front. Hi, Abby. Um, no, I'm not going to show that. That's too stressful. Um, so this was the first test project in Brighton. We just had three buildings. And... Well, you know, to cut a long story short, it was really fun. People went out on their phones playing with these lasers. So in the meantime, uh, Light Night in Leeds had had to cancel their whole event. But I said, well, why don't we do this? We can do Laser Light City in Leeds. And so that year, Leeds, Light Night Leeds was only Laser Light City. And we went up there. I got all my friends together, all the laserists who had no work, right? <laughs> Um, and so it was really nice. It was the biggest project I'd done. We had 20 or 30 crew, um, all these people who hadn't done anything for basically nine months. Um, and we got together. It was a really joyful experience, even though we couldn't get that close to each other. Um, yeah, so... It, and, and Laser Light City was one of those incredible projects. Obviously, it came out of something very bad, the, uh, the pandemic. And I feel kind of guilty but I'm very grateful that because of that experience and because of that idea I ended up investing more and more in these big lasers and now I have 30 lasers this size um yeah it's a bit bonkers oh, I'm going the wrong way I'm just going to use them. I can't figure out which way I'm going with this joystick it's almost as if a joystick isn't the ideal apparatus for operating a, a slideshow with one hand while you're Oh, this is a really fun clip. So this is in Leeds, uh, and it's on the Parkinson building. And this a, a, a young guy has figured out that the laser, if he gets them in exactly the right position, it hits the flagpole in the middle of the building, and it, light, it reflects and it lights up the whole building. So you would literally just park the laser on the flagpole and then mash the colors, and it would make the building light up in all different colors. He's, he's so happy. Look at that. Look, look what I'm doing. It's so cool. It's so delightful when people find new ways to interact with your project that you never imagined. All right, anyway, so Laser Light City went out a lot of times. This is in Worthing Pier. I've actually moved to Worthing now. Oh, yeah, Worthing Posse in the house. <laughs> oh, it's very quiet in Worthing, but revelation, I have a driveway I can park in. It's amazing. I used to have to park, like, spent 10 minutes looking for a parking space. I have a car full of lasers. I'd have to hoik up to the third floor of my apartment, which had really nice views across Brighton. I think you saw that. Um, <laughs> so yes, it went in a few places and it's been in Newcastle. We did the Newcastle New Year's Eve celebrations the last three years in a row. And it was sort of during the pandemic that I started working on, or I started working on my laser show software. So I've been working on laser show software called Liberation. And I've been working on it a little bit on and off. I've actually been working on it for about five years now, but it was only really in the pandemic that I had a bit of extra time. And I thought, well, let's really devote some time to it. So this was before the pandemic. I actually got a gig doing lasers for Fat Boy Slim. <laughs> Um, and I'd never done like a laser show like this before, but you know, I had six weeks. So, um, so this was really the first impetus to make 
laser show software, so I made Liberation. And it was quite, um, I don't know how long I've got to talk about anecdotes. I've really got to move on. Um, but yeah, I was reminded of an, an anecdote from this, because you can see, although it's quite cool, it's got a lot of effects. This isn't perhaps the most exciting bit. I think it kicks off in a minute. Just wait for the drop. Um, it was like, it had a lot of the features that I had that I have in it now, and I could actually do some quite cool effects. Um, but I couldn't do wavy lines. I could only do like flat lines. And Fatboy Slim's manager, I was in a completely inaccessible part of the venue, and Fatboy Slim's manager was like texting me instructions, and he'd be like, "Oh, we want wavy lines. We want wavy lines." And it was like, "Well, I can do some straight lines." <laughs> And um, because I wasn't always getting the text messages and I was getting well into the zone, I was like, yeah, man, I can do lasers. Laserist, I'm officially a laserist for Fat Boy Sam, I've arrived. You know, and I was going at it for like 10 minutes and I was so in the zone, it was amazing. And then I saw on my phone a text message from the manager. It was from 10 minutes ago. Can you stop the lasers, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we are. Look at that. That's a good gig, wasn't it? I don't know why I'm looking up there, I can't. I'm so used to having a screen there. I've got no time for this. Right, let's move on. Um, so then, you know, we've had Liberation out multiple times during the development. This was December 21 in the Albert Hall for um, one of the Christmas, Robin Ince, Marion Cox Christmas shows, charity shows. So it was a great opportunity for me to develop the software at a really large scale so that when it comes out, it's already been tested in a really huge environment. And last year, uh, Danny from Reach Lasers, they did the installation at Arcadia, which had 90 lasers, and he used Liberation for that. So that was a really great uh, chance for Liberation to get tested by someone that isn't me. And I did this project. This is the Coventry project that I mentioned. It's called Polaris. Um, and that was a huge success, and it actually managed to get onto the BBC website. Number three, it was incredible. Yeah, because there, there was the Laser Light City interactive bit, but also the show. So it was like audience control lasers at Cath Cathedral Ruins show. And it was like, yeah, it's got to number three. I must be really successful. And then I realized it said audience control lasers at Coventry Cathedral Ruins show. <laughs> Everyone was just sharing it because of a grammatical error. But still, I'll take the win, it's fine. Um, here's a little clip of that, which I don't have time to show you. <laughs> I can't, I can't show you. I've got too much stuff to do. Um, I'm not going to do that. That's liberationlaser.com. Um, yeah, it's... It's, um, it's, it's about to become released for early access. I'm crowdfunding it, so if you're interested in getting hold of Liberation, then visit liberationlaser.com, sign up to the mailing list, and I will open up the early access program next week. Yeah. yeah. All right, asteroids. Why the hell am I talking about asteroids? <laughs> well, it used to be a games programmer, you might have noticed with the Flappy Bird. Um, and asteroids, I'm sure there's geeks here. What's special about the asteroids screen? <laughs> it's a vector graphics screen. It's my people here, I love it. Um, vector graphics CRT monitors, instead of drawing the screen in scan lines, I'm running out of time, I'm sorry, I've got to really speed up. Uh, it draws it around, like it draws the shapes like this and it draws it and, and it, so it's really perfect. At the time, you couldn't really get high resolution games, but with this, it was really crisp, crisp graphics. And look at the bullets in this screen, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the reason they're so gorgeous is because the cathode ray just lingers at that point a little bit longer than when it's moving around, stuff and so the bullets are really bright but when you run it in an emulator on your computer it's just oh it's just like that it's rubbish so depressing look at that oh so good so good look at that beautiful vector display it's gorgeous oh, it's depressing so how can we recreate asteroids that incredible <laughs> incredible game with, uh, without a CRT vector screen. Well, of course, we can do it with lasers. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and here we have it. Well, let's, let's just go to this first. Whoa, okay, cool. Need to take my glasses off for this. <laughs> right, so can we get the really zingy bright bullets? Let's just give it a try. Whoa. Cool. <laughs> now, of course, 
um, this is just one laser moving around. I really don't have time for all these demos. Oh my God, oh, six minutes, six minutes. I haven't got time. Um, but we can slow it down. We can draw the laser. We keep the laser on while we're moving it around. Let's just slow it down. There you go. So now you can see that that is actually just one laser moving really, really fast. Let's turn all that off. Get that point rate back up. Okay. Um, so I don't really even have time to play asteroids, but you know, you know, what I was thinking I was maybe going to set this up somewhere tonight maybe in the math space or somewhere like that. If you have a space where you maybe would like this to be set up, let me know. Hit me on Mastodon, we'll sort something out. Right, um, I'm just going to leave that running. Well, I've got to turn this thing off, hold on. Five minutes, this definitely, I've got loads of time. Okay, so, did you see the, uh, the cool game in the, in the arcade? <laughs> a physical lunar lander. Yeah, was that good? Yeah, was that good or what? Yeah. No, I'm asking, was it good? I couldn't play it. It was just a massive queue of kids. <laughs> so I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could make a version of Lunar Lander that could be played by everyone? <laughs> everyone in the tents? So yeah, after I saw this, I thought, yeah, I'll program Lunar Lander this afternoon. It'll be fine. <laughs> All right, no, I had it already. Because Lunar Lander is also a vector graphics game. So it's perfect for this. And actually, I made this in 2018 because there was another event at the Royal Albert Hall again with Robin Ince, and it was a co the Cosmic Shambles. And I got to share a stage with uh, Rusty Schweikart, the Apollo astronaut, the actual first person to ever fly a lunar module in space. And I got him to play my lunar lander. <laughs> And he was a flipping legend. He just nailed it. What a dude. But anyway, I've got a version that we can all play. Let's see if it works. Let's, is it this one? Okay. Right. So this one, just like Flappy Bird, you have to control the thrust with applause. So let's see how this works out. Incredible work. All right, brilliant. That was fun, wasn't it? Cool. I won't play it myself. All right, nearly, nearly out of time. Oh my goodness, it's been such a great, great time, isn't it? We had such, such a lot of fun. Thank you so much for being warm. I haven't finished yet. So, the laser industry, it's a little bit homogenous. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, so I'm trying to encourage people that don't, don't look exactly like me to become laserists. So I've started a, a liberation diversity program. It's very loose at the moment, but we're trying to get it together in a more formalized way, offering cheap uh, software and free training for anyone who basically isn't a white guy. So if you're interested in that, please contact me at, seb, at seblee.co. And this is our first liberation day event, training for patrons and for the diversity group. Uh, Limehouse Town Hall, which was already a brilliant fun day. So yeah, come and join us. It'll be amazing. Oh, I've got some glitter stickers. Yeah. So if it's, <laughs> I just want to bribe you really to, to like me, but I've got so many of these glitter stickers. If you want one, just come and say hi. I'll give you a glitter sticker. What else do you want? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so hit me up on Mastodon if you want um, laser asteroids. If you've got any questions, I'm going to go into the, over to the Q&A area now. Wow, thank you so much. It's been such a great audience. Thank you. And I'll see you around the camp.